everybody, Russ of My Hammers 11. Hope you're safe and well. New channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon to be made aware of any time I put new content on. Make sure you hit that reminder button because obviously we're doing um, weekly game shows for the Iron Supporting Food Banks group. We want to try and raise £20,000 by the end of September, so make sure you hit it so you can keep on uh, abreast of all these uh, events we're doing. Loads of great guests, including today's guest. Uh, he's been busy. He's been busy last couple of weeks. Bless him. <laughs> now he's back at. Now he's back on the square. It's Perry Ferrick. Hi, Perry. How you doing, man? Hello, Russ. All right. All right. Cover your eyes. How you doing? We'll do it at the end, right. but we'll do it at the beginning there. Well, why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> How are you, man? How's, how's things? It must, as I said, we just start. We told you just before we start. It must yeah. be weird getting back and and recording basically at the square. Yeah, I mean, it was strange. I mean, it's kind of like because well, I mean, for everybody, when we went in lockdown, it was kind of like I was filming. Yeah, that evening, as it were, and then it was it was literally just like right, go home, um, <laughs> and then we didn't we didn't know. Obviously, nobody knew. No. We were whatever what was going on and stuff, and um, yeah. so it was it was weird because you know you're even there's a cast of about fifty down there normally. So if it was whoever you were particularly filming with that day, it was like, right, well, see you when I see you, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, we all kept in contact through lockdown. We had, like, WhatsApp groups and things like that. And, what yeah. Yeah. and um, yeah, and then we got the call, I think it was sort of around about sort of end of May, saying, looking at going back the end of June, which is what's happened. And so we've yeah. been back since the 29th of June. But it's, it is, it's it's very different at the moment. It's, yeah. it's kind of like we have to use all sorts of different ways of filming to mm. to to basically make people look like they're closer together when they're yeah. not. And there's a you know people walking around with big two meter sticks, and it's like if you get too <laughs> close and stuff like that. So it's all a bit weird. And also when we first got back, it's the same as everybody else. We, we believe it or not, we are a really close cast and, and, and that, yeah. crew down there. And the first time you see someone, you're like, hello, oh, mate. And it was all this and yeah. being and stay two metres away. I mean, everybody's had to do it. That's the way it goes. But it's just made it a little bit more difficult. But they've been very inventive mm. with what they're doing. And, and you know, you're also fighting against the thing of just, like, keeping current still. Because yeah. it's, you know, things are changing every day and stuff like mm. that. So, but it's, from what I've seen, it looks good. It's back, it's back on next week and... Um, yeah, long way out rain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, and you're right. It's also like, you know, everyone at home, and it's like there's there's been nothing sort of new that's come out, in it. It's also all reruns yeah. and stuff. So it's it's nice to get yeah. something new coming out. They keep saying these old ones and me, and it's just like <laughs> that's that's a little bit of a shocker when you're flicking through the channels and you're about 15 years younger, and you think, oh, I look all right on that, and then yeah. Then one on or something comes on and it's up to date and you're like oh no there's the truth that's the reality of it. <laughs> like the before and after like in yeah, weight, yeah. weight watches you know <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's, it's weird because it's not like just looking at a photograph um it's like that whole feeling of you know like the first time you hear your voice when you're a kid on yeah. a tape recorder or something you think that yeah. that's happening. and you have an idea of what you think you look like and what you sound like and and i hate it <laughs> i can't watch it i really can't I used to be able to, but now it's kind of like I hear the music and my missus watches it. And <laughs> I watch football or cricket or something like that. Watch it on my own in the dark. Yeah, well, at least we got, well, at least we had football to watch for a little bit of that towards the, uh, you know, we've obviously restart and West Ham and yes, yes, you know, at least at least we're in the Premier League. Doesn't matter what happens in the world, we start well, off in the I, Premier League. And it was it was kind of being starved, wasn't it? Completely of everything. Totally. I mean, everyone excited about German football on the radio. I couldn't go that far. No. But, um, <laughs> but to get all those games, it sort of, I mean, it sounds an odd, I think the same, it sort of made, made up for no European Championship. Yeah. It was, as it would have been, you know, like yeah. there's one game today, there's two tomorrow. And I don't think I missed one, Russ. I don't think I missed no. one game yeah. at all. It just, even when I had to work, it, it, it for me, it worked out luckily, you know, and, and I thought we were superb. I thought yeah. we were, we were I thought we were good going in, you know, pre-lockdown. Mm. I thought we started to get it together a bit then. And then it was lovely to watch. It was There, there was some some of the best West Ham football I've seen for a while, I have to say. So, lovely stuff. Suchek, I love him to bits. Yeah, me too. He's, he's, he's yeah, he's got something about him. And um, Bowen, um, you know, he's like, an, uh, to me, he's like another little noble. Yes. Yeah. He's very 
like he's a West Ham player. You can, I was, you know, talking to Ray Winston the other week about, you know, we were doing our little summings up of what's going on and stuff like yeah. that. And, you know, and Ray was just saying, no, he's West Ham. In. He's got yeah. West Ham in him. You can see, do you know what I mean? And there are certain players, you know. Funny enough, I did a list. Yeah, you had me up all night last night, mate, trying to do this list. <laughs> it's a nightmare if you actually start to do it. Because yeah. you then go, oh, no, but I can't have him if I've got him and blah, 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 blah. And then, so I've, I've done your team, but then I've mm. done underneath a bracketed, like, you yeah. know, like. Honourable mentions. And then I also managed to do an overpaid flops and Judas team. Boy, yeah. which would be interesting. <laughs> Well, that's good. I mean, the thing is, I mean, it's it's funny when we talk to people and they and they try and come up with their elevens and stuff because, as you said, some people they just go, yeah, no props. Some people go, yeah. oh, I'm going to be a bit sort of. It's too many people. I've got to got to put like you know, I quite like the Judas as eleven. That's quite a cool one. Well, also, um, I think what you said as well is that it's you've got to have seen these play. Yeah. yeah. So, and I've got a few years on you, mate. So um, you're an experienced fan, Perry. Would um, we call? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm pleasantly enjoying my middling years. Yes, exactly. So, how did it start for you? Why West Ham? I know you. I know you're, you know, from the area, and, and is, it was you always yeah. going to be a West Ham fan. So what happened? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's no doubt in our family with that. It's kind of. I mean, I grew up in Custom House, E60, yeah. and you know, my dad, my granddad, great granddad. It just gets passed down, and it's still to this day. It's like you know, my brother's boy had a little boy last year, and it's it's a race to the club shop. To yeah. get the you know the West Ham romper suit and the kit and everything like that, you don't have no choice in it. Basically, yeah. it's it's and you know I'm I'm glad I, in a way. You know what I mean? I, I went to Wembley in 1980. Mm. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. that game. I didn't realise I'd still be waiting 40 years later to go back. <laughs> so you know we've had our fair struggle, haven't we? You know what I mean over yeah. the years, but. It's there's something about it with West Ham. It's kind of it makes it all the better when nice yeah. things happen and we upset someone and stuff like that because we have our own little World Cups and our own little finals. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and you know, as long as you get a few of them a scene, obviously I want us to win everything. But you know, it's 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 a bad season when we kind of go out of the cup early because we haven't we've played an inferior team. I don't think we should do that. I, I totally no. disagree with that. I think. We as fans, don't matter who's managing, mm. we want to go to the finals. Yeah, you know, we we we're, we're not big enough in that sense mm. to be able to just go. Oh no, no, we're concentrating on the league. Well, what for? Yeah, you know, we, we you know a nice sort of top eight finish would be great for us. Um, and you know, and and win a cup. Yeah, it doesn't matter the teams like Chelsea and Arsenal. That's it's like they're disappointed. Yeah, if that's who they win. I, no, exactly. And I was talking to them the other day about it, and they and they said, I know it's sort of like you know, yeah, whatever. But he was like. I wouldn't want to be Liverpool or Man City because I think they, I think, you know, because we, West Ham's formed by, as you said, not doing well, but having those small peaks and those small peaks, we are, are cut, as you said, we know two or three times a season we turn up. Yes. Chelsea, Tottenham, Man United, Arsenal, four of the, yeah. two of those four will, will beat and maybe you'll beat them twice, you know, like obviously yeah, Chelsea yeah. is. And we said that, that's our. You know, that, that's what we do. We know the troughs are coming. We know we're going to lose to Burnley the, next week. We yeah. know it's going to happen. And <laughs> but we love, we love things like, I mean, my, one of my favourite football quotes ever was with Alex Ferguson when he said our performance was obscene. Yes. When we drew, I think we drew, I mean, it was Kenny Brown or whatever. Um, I'll get them mixed up. But um, they, they basically, his attitude was, you're West Ham, you should roll over for us. Yeah, you're yeah. Really yeah. You've got nothing to, you know what I mean? It's like, so you should let us win and, and bow down to our, our superiority. And we were like, no. And, yeah. and he called it obscene. <laughs> and that, that makes it even better on top of it. Do you know what I mean? It is. Like, like, we've really got into your head, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. And that's what we are. We're just the plucky little, you know, we are a plucky team that sometimes bites a bit harder than it should do, you know? And and that's, but that's, I think that sort of brings us all together as a community. We're I sort of hardened. Think, yeah. I think if you look, I mean, if you're going on holiday, yeah, I always like, oh, think that, and you've got a West Ham shirt on, and then you can see straight away, you see the claret and blue coming towards you. Uh, it's always <laughs> like, why, well, mate? Yeah, and you just think, I know this could be all right. You're, you're going to be a good bloke. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because it's all these other mugs. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But <laughs> we've been so we've been social distancing for years, Perry. Because <laughs> yeah. we don't we don't shake hands. We just go, all right, all right, irons, call your irons. That's yeah. it. And we. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's it. <clears throat> that's it. No, you're right. I, I literally, my uh, my wife hates it because when I we go on holiday, well, obviously when we went on holiday, do you remember holidays? They were quite good, weren't they? Yeah. Um, uh, my suitcase was always full, always full of West Ham's. And my daughter, bless her, she's only eight, but she knows when we go, when we fly, always travelling colours. Always yeah. travelling colours. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. She, and my wife hates it because she don't, obviously. And me and her do. Me and Flo do. But, um, yeah, you just, you just meet people. You know, I live in... Obviously, I, I live in Hornchurch, so <clears> sort of <throat> proper in, you know, West Ham country. Oh, West Ham, oh, and, man. And you have, like, you know, literally the other day, went to the... Cut my car to the MOT... The, the mechanic was a West Ham fan, so we chatted for half an hour at West Ham. I got out of the car, some old bloke across the road was walking his dog and just shouted out, I ain't signed no one, have we? And that's yeah. all we needed to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. we needed to say. And I love it. And I, I live in North London now, and it's the, and I had this T-shirt on the other day. <laughs> and I just thought I was walking the dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you can't, there's a lot of Arsenal and Tottenham around you and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, I wasn't doing it deliberately or anything like that, but it's quite funny because you just... You can see some people, they just think, he's got to be a nut of that bloke. <laughs> Not walking around here with that on and whatever. And, and then occasionally you'll get a van go past and go, go on, you are. You know? Yeah. yeah. You're on your own, mate. You're not on your own. <laughs> yeah. And it's true. And it, I always used to get that at Upton Park when you're like walking around, like walking Green Street or whatever, and you saw someone in a Man United top or, a, you know, a kid who lived around that area. And you're thinking, you're brave. Uh, you're brave. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the thing that, 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 that killed me once. I was kind of over near a, it was a good few years back, and but I was back over on the old manor. Yeah. And, and I looked over and it was like Beckton Park where I used to play when I was a kid and stuff like that. And there was a game going on. And I think there was like one West Ham shirt. And it yeah. was Liverpool's and Barcelona and Manchester United and Chelsea and stuff like that. And you think when I was a kid, when we used to play, that was a long time ago. But it was every single kid at West Ham. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think those ones who sort of, you know, their dad might support West Ham, but then they go, no, no, I want to be, I'm Liverpool. And, and there's, you know, there's no connection at all, apart from the fact that they're good. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, like you said, referring to before, I think they miss out on that in a way. They do. Because it is, it's like, it's, it's, it's just per se, isn't it? It's kind of just like, yes, we know next yeah. season. Liverpool, Manchester City will win things. Arsenal, Manchester United, Chelsea will win. It's between them sort of yeah. thing. And someone else sneaks in. Yeah. Um, and that must be, I suppose, never having had it. <laughs> I would think it would be dull because we, I mean, we are, to we are totally, we have the best and most perfect song for our team. Exactly. All tunes always hiding, you know, yeah. and it's like my dreams, they fade and die. Everything about it is it's 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 geared towards being a West Ham supporter. <laughs> it wasn't it originally meant like that, but it no. actually is is it perfectly sums up. Yeah, you know, like, you know, like that. Just the years and years of heartache. Yeah, it does but absolutely perfect. Great by like we can sit in a pub, can't we, all of us, and just go. Do you remember that one? Do you remember yeah. when we did so and so? We can pinpoint. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 they and they're immense nights. They're not just like mm. oh, you know. If you said to Ashley Cole, you know, what was your favourite cup final that you won? Mm. Oh, I don't know. It was seven. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, 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 as it narrowed down to three. <laughs> and then, and then, we nearly did it against Liverpool. I was up there in Cardiff. I went up there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, we didn't even get Wembley for that one, did we? No, 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 no. No, it's, yeah, it was... I, really, I mean, I, I spoke as I was talking to someone today actually, and um, we, were, we were talking about West Ham and his son, and his son's 13. And yeah. there was a wobble where he was thinking about, you know, when he was like eight, you know, going to live, being a Liverpool fan. And his, yeah, his, yeah. his dad went, No, stay with West Ham. And actually, it's character building. That's and it's so true. Yeah. You, you, it's character building. <laughs> you know, you, I, you can live with disappointment and stuff. I did say, I did, there was one time and I felt awful, I still feel awful to this day, but I, f I forget who we were playing. But I always go with my dad, you know, like, yeah. he took me when I was a kid and now I take him sort of thing. And uh, we got spanked at home by someone. And it was really poor, you know, like the opposite to when we do turn up. There's other yeah. times we go, what were you thinking? What were you, not, like, not one player doing it. Yeah. And I had a raving ump about it. And, <laughs> My dad's always very optimistic, like, you know, well, you know, he said, well, so-and-so was injured, wasn't he? And that should have been a penalty, that. If that yeah. was a penalty, then like that. And I just went to him, stop it. Stop it. And he went, oh, all right. And I went, this is all your fault. 
This is, I feel awful now. I feel terrible. It's ruined my weekend. I was meant to go to a party tonight and I can't go now because I've just, I've, I've got the raving up and it's because of you, because you made me support us. <laughs> It's so true. I'll never forget his shocked face. And it's like, I mean, got home, you know, and obviously he calmed down on whatever. Yeah. It's done. Who we got next week? Look at the other results and all that sort of stuff. Exactly. And I had to explain him. And I went, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's terrible to tell you, like, you know what I mean? Like, I love being a West Ham fan. But that, that one gets me. You know, it, it, you know, it was really just like, who can I blame? Ah, my dad. <laughs> yeah, it'll do. I mean, the amount of times I've I've un uh, series linked match of the day mm. in the last sort of few seasons, mm. where I was, oh match of the day's on. Do you want to watch it? No. Oh, you no. lost, didn't you? Yeah. Move well, on. If, if if I mean if 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 you, if you go to the game and yeah. we've won, and we've given someone a right good hiding. Yeah. Fabulous, brilliant. Go and have a few beers and stuff like that. Then watch it on match of the day. That night, so as they have to say nice things about West Ham, yeah, when we play really well, because there's a few on there. Let's name no names, but it just yeah. they, it, it seems to me that they sort of just a little bit like we're a bit of a joke, you know, mm. clubs or something. So you, so you've already watched the game, and then you watch it on match of the day again. Then there might be the sky thing, where you can see a whole run through or extended highlight. <laughs> so you watch that as well. And then the next morning you get up and you go and buy all the papers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the papers to read the review again and again and again of the game that you've now seen five or six times within a day. <laughs> so true. But if you lose, you do none of the above. None of it. None <laughs> it's of it. Just, I don't want to see a paper. I don't want to see Doug Ears on Match of the Day. I don't yeah. want none of it. You know, I'll, I'll like, watch Britain's Got Talent rerun on Sunday. I'm all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> and that's, but that's, that is... That is being West Ham because it happens more often than not, and that's what I love about us. Do you remember yeah. your first game, Perry? Do you remember your first game at Upton Park? I got oh at Upton Park. Do you know? Yeah. I don't really remember my first game at Upton. I remember the first game I went to because yeah, uh, said before I'm getting on now, but um, <laughs> believe it or not, it was at Highbury. Oh, okay. And my dad, for some reason, we went to Highbury um, in 1969. That was the first game that I saw, um, and we lost to Arsenal one nil. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't, I could barely see. They used to have a moat around Highbury in them days, you know, like sort okay. of. And I had a little box, claret yeah. and blue box to stand on, you know, that sort of thing. And it was a really poor angle for someone like me, you know. But um, <laughs> we got the train home, and we're on a train home, and, and this time it was my dad who had the ump, you know. And I said to him, well, what, no matter a point's a point, isn't it? And he went, well, we lost 1 0. And I said, no, we didn't, we scored. And he went, that was disallowed. Because I didn't even, like, I think I was like seven or something like that. Yeah. They put the ball in the net and, and I didn't really even register, like <laughs> going back and doing a kickoff again. It was like, I was convinced we drew one or whatever. And um, So, yeah, so that, that was that one. And then kind of like my dad always had a season ticket, him and his brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if he was working, I started to get the season ticket, you know, like go in there and stuff like that. But one of the things that I did do from 69, 70, 71, before I really started going properly, was mm. um, in those days, if the home, when the home team was away, the reserve team played at Upton Park, yep. and it was a proper reserve team. It was it mm. was full of either the young kids coming through, or players who'd been dropped, or players who were injured, injured yeah. coming back and stuff like that. And it used to cost about five pence to get in. I used to get a little white sheet of paper. Was the yeah, 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 A five. Um, and you know, you had the ground to yourselves. Really, you could just move around wherever you wanted to, whatever view you wanted to. And and I was like scouting for my dad because <laughs> obviously I was seeing the young kids come through. Yeah. And he'd say, and I'd say the little white sheet of paper and I'd write on it who was playing and who wasn't and stuff like that. I'd say, he's good. He's, he, yeah, I like him, I like him and whatever. Yeah. But I mean, I saw Bobby Moore play many times, you know, like yeah. um, Hurst. Pop rubs and people like that, and what Ooh. you know what I mean, because that was their way of now we don't have that at all. No, it's you're in the squad, and if you're not in the squad, you don't go down to the, when they used to say the stiffs and whatever that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was it was well worth five pence, I can tell you, <laughs> okay, no, because yeah. I saw a lot of those players of the 70s coming through, and a lot of the, the great players of the 60s as they was winding up, you know, and yeah. it was kind of like, and of course, because there was nobody at the ground at all. He could go right by the tunnel, and yeah. and and get the autographs. Or I used to—I mean, I used to do that. I used to go and wait outside in the car park, 
Yeah. Um, and I used to do that on a Sunday morning as well. For years I did that. I'd get up about half past seven Sunday morning, go over to Upton Park, in a little snorkel park or on and whatever, you know, and with programmes and pictures mm-hmm. from Shoot magazine. Um, and wait there because the players used to come in and see Rob Jenkins, the physio, yeah, and get treatment on stuff. And so if you were savvy about it, and I had, I mean, I, you know, I used to see this big red jag come in, like a Daimler, I think it was, and, and that was Bobby Moore, yeah, you yeah. know. And, they, you know, and I used to recognise him because I was so tiny. I was really small anyway, in this big coat and whatever. And, um, you know, they got to know me a little bit. And, mm. and, and you know, like I treasure those memories. Rob Jenkins, I met him a few years ago at the thing. And um, bizarrely enough, he remembered me. <laughs> from from all those years ago because Brilliant. he I think he'd read that I was West Ham and then he kind of put two and two together with EastEnders he's like yeah you know and I said I used to go and get the autographs and things and he used to get me all the away programs from the games and stuff like that and they used to pat me on the head and go all right little and whatever and <laughs> oh, it was fantastic so I'd go, cool I'd go home and you know and my dad would be like who'd you get today and it'd be like yeah. Bobby Moore and so and so and and it's, it's like, you know, outside the gates at work. I mean, obviously not at the moment, but outside the gates at work, we always have, like, you know, people stand there from, you know, from morning till evening. And, you know, freezing cold and stuff like that. Mm. And and I have to stop because, you know, it's that thing of, I, I remember. Know. Yeah. And I remember, and I always have this thing as well, Russ, which was interesting. And it's, it's, a, it's a good sort of theory in life as well. It's like the players that used to stop for me and spend a bit of time or whatever or sign the mm. autographs and that, were always turned out to be the really, really good ones. And the ones who were in a bit too much of a hurry or did that and whatever like that, never went anywhere. How interesting. Do you know what I mean? They were failures at the club and, you know, and it was kind of like, it's, it's, that was a good lesson in life for yeah. me, the way things are turned out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's a different thing we do, but there's the same sort of thing goes on. I know on. exactly what you mean, yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Great right, days, though. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and, I mean, obviously, you know, as you said, Rob recognised you. Yeah, Rob Jackie recognised you from West Ham, from East Enders. Obviously, there's, you know, there's there's loads of West Ham connections at East Enders, isn't it? It's like a little. Oh, mate, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, when I joined, yeah. I know, it was nearly 23 years ago. Now, 20, yeah, 98, wasn't it? 98, something. 98, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. And um, it'd been like, because I knew uh, Todd Carty and Nick very, very yeah. well. I was in Grangeville and stuff with Todd and Nick. Yeah. I worked with Oliver with him and things like that. Um, and so they were a, they were the West Ham contingent and Leslie yeah. Grantham at the time, just before I arrived. And but yeah. they'd all kind of gone apart from Todd. Mm. Um, so it was kind of like I felt like it was up to me to sort of rejuvenate it and get the West Ham gear in there and stuff like that. And so I gave it about a year and then started slipping in the odd West Ham <laughs> cigar and whatever. And and I'm I'm sorry I'm going to take responsibility for this. I I, I kind of. Um, I got it in every which way but loose that I could do stuff and whatever. And even when the wardrobe people would take me to get some clothes and stuff like that, well, that's a nice top. And it'd be like this colour, do you know yeah. what I mean? Stuff and, um, <laughs> yeah. and in, in the end, I think the bosses just went, oh, look, Billy Mitchell's a West Ham fan. Yeah. And then they started writing stuff in, do you know what I mean? And yeah, like, yeah. Players and things like that and fo- me loving football and all that sort of thing. And then and then it picked up again because down there now, you've got, well, there's Mr Dyer. Yep. Danny Dyer, who was actually, Danny Dyer was, lived across the road to me when he was a kid. Really? We, How we funny. Went, we went to the same school. We went to Woodside oh. um, and Regent Primary School. We went to Woodside with Alan Dickens. He was a mate of mine at school. Birthday was yesterday, um, wasn't it, today? Um, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so there's, yeah, there's me, Danny Dyer, Scott Maslin, who plays Jack, yeah. Jamie Balthwick, who plays Jay, little Fred, who plays my little boy in the show. Yeah. I mustn't forget anyway. Oh, blimey. There's loads. There's, there's, yeah. You know, like there's kind I of mean. about a dozen in the cast. And, and most of the crew are West Ham. So, and now, because the soap sort of embraced it, it's... I think before, they used to have a Wolford, Wolford Town Football Club. Which, yes, yes. That they referred to as being the local club. And that's all gone now. It's, it's West Ham. Yeah. There's even a claret and blue bench in the square now. I don't know whether you've yeah. seen that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so so that that's that, and it's and it's kind of interesting as well because I think at the time they was a bit worried because like none of the other soaps mention if for their locality and stuff like that, like Emmerdale, Yorkshire, and yeah, I get you. 
they never mention Manchester United or Manchester City because they don't want to alienate the viewers. Yeah, and yeah. they don't want, you know people from Liverpool not watching and blah 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 and vice versa. And and yeah. and like whereas Walford, as it were, I mean it's even ironically now what used to be a false postcode, yeah. but it's not. It's where our ground is now. Yeah, because each twenty is never like existed. This. Yeah, it existed for as Wolford E twenty, and now it is actually. So <laughs> you really they can't argue. Oh, with really on it now, yeah. West Ham, isn't it? Because it's in E twenty. So yeah. so it's really nice, and I've you know I've got to do a few things over the years. Like sometimes when I want to keep the show really topical. Yeah, I remember doing one where um, I think again I think it was when Tevez scored against Man U and and kept us up. Is that right? Am I right, Ralph? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and they called me up um, the night before. Well, I, it was on a Saturday. Was it? I can't remember. Whatever it was, it was the next yeah. day. Um, but they asked me to come in and film, like what they call an insert, for the start of the program, like just ten seconds or something yeah. like that, just to recognise the fact that West Ham had stayed up. Yeah. And it was me and um, the late John Bard and Jim Branning, and he was in the calf, and the camera started on. The headline on yeah. the paper that was it it was on the morning it was on that day's paper yeah. so when the show started that night everybody was watching it see Chevers did it and then john barn just goes he did it didn't he the boy and it's like yeah go on so everybody at home would have been watching it going how did they do that <laughs> yeah because i yeah because that's always something that i noticed it's like oh, you know if the, the election or whatever they always you yeah. know oh boris is in for another four years fucking hell you know, it's like very think, clever it's brilliant though when we when we can do that because I do imagine people having their tea and then going, <laughs> how? That's not right. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, so like those those sorts of things. I mean, and obviously there was a, there was a time where when we were getting close to the Liverpool final, mm. you know, and and the, the, the governor was phoning me up and saying, what what do you think? Do you think they're going to get through to the semi final and this and that because they were, you know, to we want to be able up, yeah. to do something if they do and all that sort of thing, but. I couldn't do anything that time. I think I'm still crying in Cardiff. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Billy, uh, Perry's not picking up. I know. I know he's not. Gerard just scored. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's what it is. But uh, no, brilliant. Uh, really, really interesting. As you said, yeah, it always surprises me when I watch it and it's like they, they do the inserts and, and, and now we know why, how they've done it. Very clever. Yeah. Anyway, let's, cool. let's talk about the 11. Let's, let's go back to West Ham. Back 11. to West Ham. Back to West Ham. So this 11. This 11, Perry. Right. Yeah. Let's start off in goal. Keeper. Keeper. Right. Keeper. I've thought long and hard about all of these, you know. Um, <laughs> my manager's John Lyle, by the way. Oh, very good. This has to be in. Um, I, it was a toss-up for me between Ludo, mm. who I thought was magnificent. Yeah. And, you know, he, he, and, and a character and everything. About, yeah. But he was a good shot stopper and everything. Um, and I really liked him. Um, but I have to go Phil Parks. Yeah. Um, because, you know, well, he's a mate of mine as well, and he'll kill me if I don't say that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, he, he, I mean, what did he, he, was, he, he was a record signing, wasn't he? He was. He was. And, and, and took over from a record signing, Bobby yeah, Ferguson. Bobby Ferguson. Um, our time's changed, five and a half. Well, back. I mean, you got to think nowadays, you know, that it, it, it's in essence someone like Reading... Buying the uh, gate, the Haya for Man United, you know that, yeah, that was that yeah, was the yeah. I mean, he, he were, were a championship and, team, you know, and also with both those goalkeepers as well. I yeah, mean, you're talking about longevity as well. I mean, Parks from what was it, seventy nine? Um, we signed him. Something uh, like, yeah, 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 and then you know, and he and it was Ludo who really took over from him. Um, and he, and it was a it was a crime that he didn't play more for England. But then at, at that time it, it was it was um, what's his name? Wasn't it? It was Clements and Chilton. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he did play, and I think he was in the squad a couple of times. And um, his wife did tell me that they they, they they called him up again one time, and and uh, you know he he just said no. Nah. He said, look, am I going to play? Are you yeah. going to play me? And and they said, well, we don't know. And, he, and I think he kind of retired himself from it. Do you know what I mean? He just said, I can't, yeah. I'm not going to get my hopes up again and stuff like that. Just an unfortunate thing that, that we had that sort of wealth for goalkeepers at the time, but brilliant, brilliant shot stopper and big man, big yeah. man. Um, 
And he did adverts for Cossack hairspray. He did. He did. In Shoot magazine. Yeah. Which is just, I mean, that's up there with Kevin Keegan <laughs> and Brute, isn't it? It's kind of. <laughs> and, he's, yeah. and he's such a lovely mm-hmm. bloke. Such a lovely he's bloke a, as well. That's a nice man. Yeah. Very and nice bloke. And very. So modest. Mm. About everything that he's done and stuff like that. And um, no, no. So it's. it's it's, it's it was out of those two, um, yeah. but definitely Phil, yeah. Yeah, and he's just turned 70, isn't he? He just turned 70 because Marie, we've he had Marie on. He, he looks amazing, though. He does. He, 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 he's still got the same hair. Wait, no, he grew it for his 70th because we interviewed Marie. <laughs> like the Cossack. Yeah, and he grew it just for his, 70th, just for his 70th. Love him. Oh, Absolutely watching. love the man. Oh yeah, he'll be there. We're gonna we're gonna do one. I've been I've been promised by Marie. We're gonna do it in his bar. Oh, in his lovely. house, where we can all oh. get back to normal, so that'd be that'd be fun, wouldn't it? That'd be good. <laughs> it's got a lovely bar, right? Okay, um, fills in. Um, left back, should we go left back? Or left back. You yeah, you playing left back, or are you playing four at the back, or what are you doing? I'm um, doing. Yeah, I'm, I've got a kind of uh, four, four, two. Okay, okay. No idea. Um, see, this is this is why I have to say two for everyone, really, oh, because great. they are so good. I mean, you know, it was a, it was a battle between. Stuart, Ray Stewart, yeah. um, and Julian Dix. And yeah. I mean, both for obvious reasons, but in the end, um, I've had to go with Dixie because just because, yeah. I mean, he's just, he's another one. A lot of my team, you'll find, I sort of personify West Ham. Yes. Uh, there's a lot about my choices are about what they did. Yeah. How much I enjoyed them as a player. And, and you know, the way players kiss the badge now. Yeah. yeah, and and they and you know they and they 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 they're, they're all idolised for it. Even the ones who I've kind of bracketed, as it were. Do you know what I mean? Like sort yeah. of Ludo and Phil Parks. It's like you know. So, but yeah, I mean Dixie, that left foot. Oh God, I mean, and some of the challenges that just <laughs> you know, again another player who really should have played a lot for England. Yeah. Um, and I know he tells a story about where I think I forget who it was who was in charge. I don't know if it was Taylor or someone like that. But you know, someone said to him, an assistant, forget who the manager, it might have been even Hobble or something like that. Um, but just said, do yourself a favour, grow your hair. Oh, Venable, yeah, and, and, 96. And, you, and the boss will get you in a team. And he said, mm. what's nothing I've got to do with it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How ridiculous is that? And then. This was pre Beckham having yeah been exactly captain in England and stuff like that and it's just like what a ridiculous thing to come out with. He's one mm. of those players who just give one hundred percent, if yeah. more, if not more. Yeah. And that that I have a, a fantastic picture of him upstairs of um, when he scored that penalty against Schmeichel. Yeah, and he just walloped it in with his left foot and it bounced back out and he kicked it straight back at Schmeichel again. Yes, and just went. <laughs> and stood there like that, but the old socks rolled down, and it was it's another Billy Bonds, you know, yeah. in that set, you know. And I like I like the players that we have at West Ham. We 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 do have culture. We have had some fantastic players over the years, yeah. skillful players who haven't even made these teams, which is just yeah. you know that damn have spoiled with them. Um, but we also, you know, we like them players with heart and yeah. a bit of aggro about them as well. Yeah. Like we have to roll over. You know, yeah. if we can't beat you, watch watch you go. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to take you out and whatever. It's so true. It's so I, true. You know what I mean, it's it's getting ridiculous now. The game, some tackles that oh. you know, it's what you can't can and can't do and stuff like that. Leave it alone. Yeah. Leave the game alone. Leave the pitches alone. You know, look, there's even the non-league clubs now have got like snooker table like pitches and stuff yeah. like. That. It's. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, um, I suppose it's kind of looking back with rose coloured spectacles. But of course, yeah. It did seem to be, when when you watch those sort of reruns, I watch a lot of the games, you know, the 70s, what they show. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And you remember all them players because you had them on football cards. Sure. Do you know what I mean? And it's like you probably name all the players and teams because they didn't switch teams around that much then. You know, I no, can remember watching all. West Ham. I mean, it'd be, it'd be a bit of a shock if. You know, they drop someone or whatever. It's kind of like, yeah, you, know, you don't know who you're going to see. But yeah, I'm going off yeah. the subject again. But yeah, That's so true. Dixie, yeah, Dixie gets to the back, gets the nudge from me. Yeah, no, you're, t- you're totally right. What you say about players like that, you know, something funny is like we interviewed, um, we interviewed loads of like, 
you know, the Cotties, Mackers and people like that and Tony Gales. And I think Tony said when he was at West Ham, um, every year bar one was a testimonial year. Yes, that's a really good point. And brilliant point. Ma- Mark Noble and that's it. You know, he's yeah. in the modern era. So it just is the way the game moves, unfortunately, isn't it? Yeah, um, but I, I think that's a shame as well. Because it is a it's shame. Kind of, you know, it's to, to keep up with all of that. And I mean, you know, you, you, I can't help but get cynical sometimes, you know what I mean? Of like the shirt sales and things like that. You know, some yeah. players all around the world. Well, we know they are. Yeah. Because, yeah, OK, they're good players, but their shirts will fly off the shelves. And that, that makes clubs a lot of money and stuff like that. And so yeah. it's continually, you know, if, if, if um, I don't know, Ronaldo is your favourite player. Yeah. Any transfers, well, then that shirt's no good anymore. You have to get that one. And yeah. do, do you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, and, and I think there's a lot of kids who kind of then they swap the team for that yeah. reason. No, you know, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. And it all comes back to that thing of just being like knowing who you support, who plays, and what have you, you know. But Definitely. yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm sounding like so sort of. Jay- no, no, because I think, because everyone, because 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 basically, we, we interview uh, what I call not unexperienced fans and experienced fans you're an experienced yeah. fan and so you've got a slightly you know you've got a different view of than a, a less experienced fan you know what i mean you live yeah. through the the you know that era and and you live through obviously the pitches and you know the the, the sand and and bogs of, oh. of stamford bridge and we turned them over four nil yeah, and, and, pe- yeah, yeah. and things like that where you know for me i don't i i never did i mean i joined a, i mean i suppose it's more about early 90s I came I started to support my stand um and I, I've actually had to learn I, I watch a lot of Robert Banks's videos because he puts all the things up that wasn't a good time to start was it <laughs> no, no it was a season we went the season we went up so I was a bit of a glory hunter oh, oh, well, to be yeah. honest yeah I'm a glory you hunter to, but then, like you're like me in 1980 still yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly but it's true it's just different view different viewpoints um yeah. well we'll put Julian in um you go for your. T- you've got the team probably written down, Pell. You go as you go through, mate. You go. Well, I've got you my, my, other two, my two sort of central defenders again. Yeah. Um, Toss ups mainly between. I've got all these down to sort of two players in the same sort of position. Love it. Roughly. Um, I've gone for Alvin Martin. Yeah. In the middle at the back, and and my kind of reserve for him is Rio Ferdinand. Yeah. Now I accept that Rio is. Well, was probably a more gifted player in terms of, you know, the way he bring the ball yeah. out and things like that. Yeah. And and it's proved it. I mean, it's, you know, his career and everything's been fantastic and wonderful, wonderful player. But again, I go back to Alvin Martin with his head all bandaged up. Yeah. yeah. Scoring a hat-trick against Newcastle against three different goalkeepers yeah. on the same night. Um 1980, he had the black eye after the game, and 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 he's he was the scouser, but the most adopted he adopted West Ham and West Ham adopted him definitely. Um, and you know he's he's there, and I see so you see my back four at the moment. I've got I've got Billy Bonds, I've got Alvin Martin, Julian Dix, yeah, and alongside Alvin. The reason why them three are there is because they're there to protect the wonderful Bobby Moore. Oh, of course. Bobby Moore is going to be... This is in my dream team. You know, I mean, it might yep. be slow. Don't care, but, man. Yeah, the York, only man. person who could understudy Bobby Moore is Bobby Moore. Yeah. That's, that's, just, that's a given. Just, you know, he, he'll he bring the ball out for us and do like he did in the World Cup in 1970 and that ball up to Hurst in 66. And yeah. just so many memories and, you know, wonderful things as that, you know, like... I mean, I, I say I was lucky enough to see him play a few times. Yeah. yeah. But um, just that, I mean, one of them stories, you remember when he, he knocked the referee out? Have you ever <laughs> seen that one, mate? I've he, seen, he, I've he, seen, he, yeah, I saw the clip. Yeah, someone said to me. Cold, and every, the game carried on and more went down. <laughs> Pulled his whistle from around his neck and stopped the game. Um, when, he, when, he, when he saved the penalty against Stoke in the semi final, I watched that on Sports Night. And that broke my heart, that because he saved it, didn't he? And it come back out, and they scored. Yeah. And then you know, Hurst was getting, you know, Bank saved him. But it's just like to me, just the ultimate, the the the, the best player in the world, yeah. the world's ever seen. I, I really go that far with it, and just 
the way that he carried himself. And mm. I, I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I did meet him a couple of times. I met right. him a lot when I was a kid, but um, yeah. you know, I met him in older life. Um, and, he, you know, and I know a lot of people who were, you know, very, very close to him. Um, and Tina, he's, he's, my, my biggest comment was Tina, his, his ex-wife said to me at the day one time, she went, you know, he'd have liked you. He'd have liked you. You're a very polite man. You're very, you've got very good manners and whatever. And, it, and that's all I hear. Of, you know, like, you know, the classic thing of when he when he cleans his hands because because the, the Queen's the queen, got white yeah. gloves. He's just played 120 minutes of football mm. in a scorching heat, covered yeah. in mud and everything. And it's like, oh, Still has that. that's what he notices before he gets his hand mm. on the World Cup and, and he ain't getting stitched up in uh, Bogota. Yeah. Well, that's a joke that was. But... um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I could you can tell I could go on about him for years, so I better move on. But so that's my back four: is is, yeah. is Bonds, Martin, Moore, Dix. Dix, nice. Get in the midfield. Yes, go for it. So right in the centre of the midfield, Trevor Brooklyn. That's about to say if you didn't have Brooklyn on, you got your bloody Trevor t-shirt Brooklyn. on. Well, he's on my shirt anyway. That's what I, mean. <laughs> uh, I love watching him, and I was I was old enough as well to appreciate because I played a lot of football when I was a kid as well yeah. and I played local clubs and stuff like that um, but I used to love watching him and copying him and um, you know the way he used to drop a shoulder and because he wasn't yeah. very fast but he, he, he could see everything sort of five minutes before anyone mm. else um, and he used to glide it was like he was in a different game to everyone else it was like he was on ice skates and all the else, all the others were wearing like platform shoes or something. You know what I mean? It was, it was just completely. It was like a swan, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know that beautiful moment, you know, when Clough had a dig at him before 1980, and you know, really did kind of lay into him. And then he scores that goal, or as we say, when Triff fell over. Yeah, fell over. But yeah. It's actually a fantastic header. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously we've seen it loads and loads of times, but I don't know how you can get into that position it's that low. Where you're yeah. laying back almost horizontal to Mental. get the to get the ball, in. and it comes at him at such pace. But yeah, and any day of the week, a fantastic player, play, yeah. brilliant player to watch. Um, just got on with it, and he, you know, again, my protecting my good players and stuff like that. You know, he had people around him like Billy Bonds. You yeah. know, if, if someone was snapping at his heels and. You know, say, Bill, have a look, you know, and Bonds, all right, mate, don't worry, <laughs> crumbs, you know, you're out of the game. Um, so Trevor, with his understudy, is, you know, Alan Devonshire. Yes. You know, we we, 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 we had um, an, an, a nice little run going there of, like, with Trevor and then Devonshire and then my old mate Alan Dickens, yeah. who I, I think was a far, far better player than he was given credit for, just because it was only, he only had a few years at West Ham. Mm. Um, but he he played. I remember. I remember at school and stuff like that. He used to practice the the the, the drop shoulder Brooking really? and things like that. Yeah, and and if you look at old footage of Brooking and you look at old footage of Alan yeah. running with the ball, he had that same sort of ice skating thing about him and whatever. And it was just you know it was just unfortunate the way things panned out for Al. But um, so yeah, so I got Brooking, I got Devonshire there, I got Nobes, of course. Yeah, we got protection, Nobes protection. Yeah. As well, um, his understudy is John Monker. Love John Monker. Just because I mean, and this is this is all what I was saying before, Russ, is that John Monker, I used to love watching him play because he was, you know, he's another one of those what you call the socks rolled down. Yes. Get on with he just used to make me laugh. I mean, he'd do yeah, things to behind the ref, to yeah. the crowd. The ref he would see. He used to do that the um, uh, when he was particularly t- towards his latter career when he was a substitute quite a lot, yeah. didn't he? He used to yeah. like run behind. He used to run yeah. behind the uh, the linesman, didn't he? Yeah, he was just he was just like kind of a really you know he you know it's it's nice to see. You don't see as much of it now you because don't. of every, everything that's so you know it's money driven now and it's commercial it's and everything like that. It's yeah, you yeah. can't you, you know. It, but those, those sorts of moments, like, you know, like, I remember that, the, 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 I think it was a Rodney Marsh thing on the start of the big match where him and Tony Curry fell over and they kissed. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that, I mean, just... 
Well, unfortunately we, now, I think it's now with, with football, it seems anyone who stands out, everyone everyone sort of berates. So, like, I look at Grealish and everyone's like, oh, he's a right toss. Oh, no, no, no. He's, yeah, he's yeah. cocky. I've been funny, but he's just because he's got personality. And, yeah, he might be a bit cocky, but he's, yeah. he's confident in his... In his and it's, so I don't mind that, you know what I mean? It, it, yeah, and he's, it's... Yeah, there's, there's a thin line between that and arrogance. Yeah, exactly. And I think sometimes just because someone might not smile so much or do whatever... Well, don't dig them out in that sense yeah. because they're, 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 they're doing what they're being paid to do. Yeah. E- equally, though, I, I like players with a bit of charm about them as sure. well. And, yeah. and, 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 and Monks would, you know, get involved. He scored some good goals and stuff like that. But you could always count on him for a bit of a giggle yeah. as well. And it's true. So here's that. And then on the other side, this is, this is a hard one, this, because um, so the Mutton Oves protects him, Brook in. Um, yeah. Whatever. Now, alongside Trev, this is at the moment. At the moment, I am. I want Declan in there. Yep. As long as he doesn't go in the next. <laughs> well, we'll put this up. We'll put this up in a couple of days to make sure for you. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of like you know, it's one of those things because if if, if you know, he's he's a nice kid actually, and yeah. you know, and, and what a footballer. Oh, and yeah. he's yeah, he, to, to me, he 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 tackles like more. Um. Mm. It, you know, which is something you, 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 he reads it. He reads the game. Yes. As well as what Moore did. And, and Moore was very young and he did it. But that boy would be a captain of England. No oh, doubt. About it. I, you know, and it'll probably be with someone else. But at the moment, if I could get hold of him, I'd just say to him, look, mate, you, you, you're 21, 22. Yeah. Um, you're captain, you're, you're, you've got a big captain in the West Ham. Give him the captaincy because Nobes, you know, hopefully we get a little bit more out of him. But yeah. I think you should you should give it hand it over now. Yes. And say to him, look, we built I want to build a team around you. Totally. You are you're in the England team already. Yeah. We are still in the premiership. You will be playing in every single game possible. If you go somewhere else, you might not get that, blah blah blah. You ain't gonna peak until you're 25, 26. So Christ knows what you'll be like then. <laughs> All being well, injury free. Yeah, yeah. So listen, we looked after you. So look after us for a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. And then go with our blessing, and don't totally. go to Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> don't go to Chelsea or Spurs. Otherwise, you're off my list, Deck. You got. Oh it. dear. Well, there you go. No, I, and and I'm and I'm done study, and he's itching to get in. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think with Deck, I think the trouble with Deck is, I think anywhere he goes, bar I'd say probably Man City. Uh, if he goes to Chelsea, or if he, you know, they'll put him in centre back, and I think he's lo- I think he's wasted as a centre back. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a brilliant thing for England. Oh yeah. For, that, that that you know, if needed, he yes, can slip into that. But it's clear that he doesn't want to play there really. And yeah. what about that goal? That's what I mean. Gets his goal. What now, about that shot mm. the other week? Um. And he's, you know, like I say, he, he, there's been a few times I've seen him do that particular tackle that I think um, Moore did on Rivellino. Yes, yes, I know exactly what it, you mean. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes to ground. Yeah, take and ball, scoop. And gets quicker than him and then brings it out. And I've seen Declan do that a couple of yeah. times. And you just think, has he been watching that sort of mm. Mexico 1970 or something like that? Because there's only certain players who can do that. Yeah. Otherwise, they go in and it's a foul. And certainly in this day and age, it's yes. like that. you can't get away with that. But when you look at it and you go, no, he didn't touch him. He took yeah. the, He waits and waits and waits, didn't he? Back pedals and then exactly. he goes in, up, out and away. Yeah. Um, so I just, I, I just hope he stays for a couple more years. And me too. I'm, I'm, you know, and if if we can do that, actually do that. If if Moyes can, you know, you got Suchek, Rowan, you know, there's some players that I thought were post lockdown starting to gel yeah really starting Definitely. to gel you can and see there's a new there was something there. about it wasn't it Russ there was something about the yeah. way that they were playing it, it, it was kind of just like we've had so much it's like plodding in mud you know mm. like and it has been yeah and, and we had so much bad luck with all VAR and different things and what have you do you know what I mean it's not yeah. just an excuse we really did you see the league table if yeah. there was no VAR yeah yeah if it wasn't yeah oh, yeah we'd have been Champions League <laughs> Well, a bit too much actually, but <laughs> but yeah. So that's in, that's my midfield is, nice. is, is Declan, Trev, Mark, and then sitting just in front of those three. Yep. Don't know whether this. I don't understand this false number ten stuff. But I suppose it kind of. <laughs> I mean, you're either number ten or you're not. Yeah. Do you know? 
<laughs> it's like, yeah. In my day, it was not number nine was centre forward. Number ten was they used to call it inside forward. Sure, I, I, I know. I've been learning all about these pell now because, yeah. like, we've, left we've, half, we've, Bobby Moore was. Yes, he, left half. I know all left, about them now. Yeah. So, but yeah, but so sitting in front of the midfield, um, obviously at the moment, doing a fantastic job for us, Antonio. Yeah, it's where I think he's lethal, you know, and mm. and I'm kind of, I'll go on to that in a minute, but um, it would have to be Paolo, yeah, Paolo sitting, sitting behind what will be my front two, yeah, because I'm a big believer as well. In, in, um, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get this like one man up front thing, I, 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 can't, I don't understand it, and one I don't understand why managers. Do this thing of like where, you know, if we're going, if we've got Manchester City coming to play, yeah, um, and so whoever we've got managing, doesn't matter whoever it is, says right. Well, do you know what I mean? We'll we'll, we'll do five against at the back and four across the middle, and we'll just try and keep them out and stuff like. That. No, don't no. play two wingers. Play two up front. Go at them from the whistle. Well, it, that is, it's it's just. It just astonishes me that the that teams are actually falling over, rolling yeah. over. They go, well, we can't, we're never going to beat them like that. Like, well, you might. It's a free you hit, might, isn't it? Because it's you might get De Bruyne and people like that going, mm. hang on a minute, are you supposed to respect me? Yeah. Are you supposed to let me go running and think, no, crunch him. Crunch yeah. him, get the ball up, have two up front, big man, small man. Always yeah. work for us. Yeah, simple. Um, a bit of flair and a bit of bite in the team. That's, that's what my team's about. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I and I just I, I just don't get this this thing of like, well no we decided you know to to, to just play one up front against yeah. Sansa and, and and you know you, you're like well it never works no. we still get chunked five yeah more, right? exactly yeah why not give it a try yeah why not try and scare them because when teams do do that it's a bit like FA Cup upsets yes the the the, the, the big flash teams don't know what's hit them nah. No, no. You know, and they can moan about the pitch or the dressing room. It's tough. That's how it is. You started yeah. out like that once, you know. Oh, I'm getting a little bit on the soapbox here. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Bill. Yeah. Getting wound up because I want it to happen. Bro. <laughs> but it's true. And it's, it's like the one thing that winds me up about the modern game as well is not playing proper wingers. Like proper yeah. wings, they play inverted, inverted wingers. What the fuck yeah. is an inverted winger? It's a left foot on the right side. It winds me up since, yeah. since, um, that's why I like Bowen because Bowen's like, but he's still left footed and they put him on the right, but he's yeah. got that sort of old school. Like, I used to like when I was in, in my day, but we had like Lazaridis, we had Matthew Effrington, we had so, and yeah, exactly. Left, left wingers what? beating the fuller, being the fullback, yeah, cross it in, big man, in it goes, done. Simple. Yeah. There we go. Oh, my so, sake. Now. We, we, we were always a winger's side, West Ham. We always had wingers. Yeah. And it was just exciting, really exciting to watch. Mm. Um, you know, like taking the ball down to the dead ball line, you know, and then pinging it into the box. And then you get like a Hurst or Pop Robson or someone like that. Or yeah. Hudson, you know, you know, I'm, I, 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 you can see where I'm going with this. It's the fact of the matter is it, I just think everything what I'm saying is now deemed old fashioned, old fashioned, yes. yeah, old fashioned setups. Teams don't do that now. Well, we don't all have to do what the big six or the big five do, let them do that, mm. and then almost like you know, not that I like them at all or whatever, but almost like in that Wimbledon crazy gang sort of way, not playing, trying like to disrupt it. them, yeah, you know what I mean? but yeah, it was I like mean. teams were scared of them because it was just like, hang on, they don't respect us. We mm. don't know what they're going to do. And it put them on edge, that cup final against Liverpool. You know, they came yeah. out in all the white suits, didn't they? And Wimbledon were just like, really? <laughs> really? You think we're going to let that happen? You know, I'd like to, you know, but I, as you see, as I say, in my team, it's, 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 I'm trying to get that balance. And that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think recently, the problem what we've had is that we've got an abundance of flair players. Yes. Um, and, we, you know, we can't get rid of any at the moment. We, it seems to me that we have to get rid of some to buy. We really need a couple of defenders. Yeah. That's our main thing. We're overloaded mm. we with, are. With, with field players. And, mm. you know, and I, and I won't name names, but there, but there are some who I just think, no, 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 mate, go away. 
you're, you're, you're not, not even yeah yeah yeah, you, 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 that, that difference of where someone their head drops or mm. there's a certain player in a team at the moment who, who, who bottles tackles yeah, absolutely sure. bottles tackles and doesn't track back and and it's not like he's been giving us i think you know what i'm talking about but <laughs> it's 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 like it's not like he's giving us these beautiful wonderful goals and sure scintillating skills we're, it's not we're not even getting that anymore do you know what i mean mm. and it's kind of like well, it seems know. more. It seems that what Moyes is trying to do, and with his interviews and stuff, and we've seen it with Suchek and Bowen, is yeah. he knows what it's like, and and that's why I like. I think Moyes, although he has you know haters and whatever, I'm very pro Moyes because I think he's a typical I West Ham manager, great. you know, like a real fighter, and he's yeah. got some fight. He's got Nolan in. He's got bloody uh, you know Stuart Pearce. Yeah. He's got proper yeah. guys who are going to be shit scared. I, I, I was chuffed when I heard that. Yeah, but I'd love him to get Dixie back there as well because. Could you imagine if you were playing bad? Yeah. In that dressing room at half time, and you've got Pierce and Dix. Exactly. Just, I mean, and Nolan just balling you out. You'd you can see up. that now. You can see it with Nolan already. I mean, since Nolan took over, we we score more corners. We've got you know because Nolan used to do that really annoying thing. We'd stand in front of the goalkeeper. Yes. He'd always yeah, yeah. and then that, but Antonio does it, and he's obviously yeah. a unit lower center of gravity, and they hate it. Yeah. We're being a bit nastier, and well, that's that, what we need. That, it's that thing, Russ. It, it, it's 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 like you know, it's the it's the perfect elixir. Yeah. Perfect potion is having players like what I've said, you know, certain players who will annoy, aggravate, yeah. stand yes. up for themselves, yeah. make life difficult, that but also helping out their, you know, like the, the elegant yes. sort of player. You know what I mean? Like you look after them, like we'll you do your job, yeah. we'll knock it to you, and you can go and be fancy down and whatever, and, and we'll clear the way for you. Yeah. And then use up front, well then we'll put it on a plate for you. Yeah, you know, and it and it, and it, you get that balance. God, I mean, like you, you know, that's. But I don't think it's that hard to be honest with you. No, it oh, it's, sounds ridiculous, but it's just. A, a, I think be nice if Moyes with Nolan and and whatever, if they did sort of take up that matter, they'd probably listen to me and go, well, it's not the way the game is and stuff like that. And it's like, well, it used to be, and and who's to say now that you know it's like you know look at um, what's his name the other week City manager. God, yeah. I mean, he ballsed up that game, didn't he? You know, yeah. like, um, with his tactic, he, he changed it all. And, and it didn't work. No. It didn't work at all. But, you know, we could try it and it might work. And then you kind of just go, well, hang on a minute. We're on to something here. Yeah. Rather, than, rather than sort of putting a white flag up before the ball's been kicked, you know. It does annoy me with those games because it is a free hit, isn't it? It's a free it hit. Is. You're not expected to lose. Like, like, you know what? We yeah. are going to defend, really, for 90 minutes. We'll try and get someone on the break, but you can never hit one bloke on the break. That's the other yeah. thing in the solo centre forward. Because even if he gets it, he's got to hold it up. You know, it, it's... it's. But if you've got a two, you know, like, you know, a, a big guy holding it up or knocking it on and someone running across. And, I, you know, it's, 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 it's things that I find really sort of blatantly obvious. It's kind yeah. of like, well, you know... Leave two men up when the other team have got a corner, exactly. because the opposition have to then take two three. men back. Or three, really, because they have one to cover, don't they? Yeah, as well. they've got to take three. But if you only leave one up, then they yeah. go, "Oh, we can all go up now." Yeah. Am I mad, or is it like? No, it's, it, do you know what I? I find it. It it does baffle me, Pell, those type of things because you yeah. think, but it, there's got to be a reason for it. But still, I, I know what you mean. It's just it's just crazy that people. Well, it's, the thing that we're talking about, I think, Russ, is what managers do when they panic yeah. in the last 10 minutes. True. They'll, yeah. they'll send a goalkeeper up. Do you know what I mean? They'll do yeah. anything to get a goal back in a game or something like that. But why leave it that long? Why, Why? you know, it's kind of... It's it's always like, right, well, they're throwing everything at it now. Yeah. Well, well, start off in a bit further up the pitch and you might not have to do that, but... No. Nah. It's defensive know? first, isn't it? It's, it's people. It's, it's always a lot of teams, and and yeah, you know, West Ham as long as yeah, probably at least half of the the bottom half of the Premier League. It's all defensive first as a mentality, isn't it? And that's why yeah. you're right. It's like rather than what can we do, it's let's not concede too many because you know, come the end of the season, it's goal difference will count or whatever, and, and yeah. you know. But, but then we, we we live in an age though where you know, like sort of five years ago, Leicester win the league. Yeah, no, exactly. You know, and and it, it, it's, 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 these things are not impossible. 
you know, like six months before they went on that league winning season. I mean, they were dead and buried. They, they were. were bottom, yeah. And they were about 10 points, you know, adrift. And then less than 18 months later, they're champions, Premier League champions. Mental so, think about it. Nigel Pearson deserves a lot of credit for that, you know what I mean? Because he was Definitely. doing things there with not a great budget and no. really not the best bunch of players. I mean, no, I haven't really heard of most people down there. No. I've, I've always been of the, the sort of thing of just like, you know, I look at our fixtures and, I, you know, still to me, I just think Leicester will beat them. Wolf, <laughs> yeah. them. Sheffield United will beat them. You know, like... Yeah. And it's not the case anymore. It's kind no. of like... And it's the ones like Sheffield United had a brilliant season last season. They did. And, and that's, but it's togetherness, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's yeah. a team rather than individuals. It's a, it's a team. Exactly. Exactly. And it's getting that thing, you know, it's getting that whole spirit into it. It's brilliant when you see a team like that, you know, yeah. whatever fault they're in. And you can just see that they're, they're out for each other. They're all genuinely pleased for each other. And, and it's like any, any, when, you're, when your job is enjoyable in life, well, then you, you don't mind going to work, do you? You know, it's kind of like it's, you know, conversely, if it goes wrong and people start getting on your back and stuff like that, then, you know, I mean, I, you know, I don't players doing social media and all, I don't do none of that. It's just as no. close as you get. My missus has had to set this up. <laughs> I don't have a clue what you're talking about, Zoom. <laughs> Me neither, that's what I, I do say so like this. I thought it was an old 80s pop song, Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> that's about oh, it. Dear. All right, I better get on to my forwards. Yeah, go on then, let's get on. <laughs> you're thinking... Fucking, I'll pick one no, no. Do you know what, Pell? That's what people love about this show, and that's why we do all right. Because it's just two. It's, I like to make it like two blokes in a pub with a beer mat, writing your team up, and you just go oh, yeah, the, and then you it. you put the wall to rights and this and that and that, and that's what we do. There's no structure. It's just. No, it's good. It's a good idea. Right. right, front two, two different eras. Yeah. But like you know, I said I like the big man, small man thing. Yeah, yeah. But my my understudies in this, as it were, is Pop Robson. Yes. Who I mean, that was that was when I was really getting into getting over to Upton Park and stuff like that, going at the, around the South Bank goal. Yeah. Uh, and and I really remember going to most of those games. I think it was a seventy two seventy three season where he got twenty eight goals, and he scored a fabulous bicycle kick at Upton Park. Um, and he was like, I think I, I, I liked him as well because I was little and he was little. Um, but tremendous, like poacher, striker. Um, so uh, Pop, was, uh, he was brilliant. But obviously, I have to go for another small man, um, Tony Cotty. Yeah. West Ham, through and through. Another one, he's got Karen Boo blood in his veins. Definitely. Um, a fan who went on to play for his team. I, I, I think uh, any of those players, we had quite a few of them over the years. I'm like, keep mm. them all. Keep yeah. all them players. <laughs> we played Tottenham, didn't we, after the lockdown and whatever, and, and Nobes couldn't even play. And I just thought, that dressing room, how will most of those players know what this yeah. game means to totally. us? There's no crowd there. No. There's no, nothing to wind it up and everything. And not even Nobes to say, do you not know how important this game is to our fans? You know, that sort of thing. So to have, you know, a, a boy who, who grew up on the terraces, watching from the terraces to come on and play for him, you knew that every goal he scored for us. He was, and you can see yeah. it, his, his goal yeah. celebrations. Delighted. So, yeah, so I've gone for TC as my, as my main forward with Pop as his understudy. Yeah. Then I've gone the other way around on this because I've gone for Jeff Hurst alongside Tony Cotley. Bigger man. Um, yeah. What, what more can you say about Hurst, really? I mean, just... It, it, it's all there for everybody around the world. Um, not just, you know, I mean, he scored, I, I think, 170 odd goals for us. I could be wrong, it might have been more. Um, I saw a few of them myself, luckily enough. Um, my dad tells me of when he scored six against Sunderland. Yes. 1968. So that was just a year before I first went. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that just, the heading. You know, like glancing headers. You know, we see him in the World Cup final. Um, that relationship that he had with Peters and ghosting mm. in and all that sort of thing. And I think, you know, in, if it was all the same era and stuff like that, that Jeff Hurst and Tony Cotty up front oh. would have been frightening. Special. Absolutely frightening. But obviously, 
Jeff's understudy is McAvenny. It's just, you know, another another player who just, a bit like the, the John Moncur thing, you know, yeah. smiler, a smiler. And, he, you know, and he could have a row as well. Yes. Anybody had to go at him, I mean, that old fiery Scots temperament. But what a fantastic player. And that was, obviously, that was the, the fantastic season, 86. I mean, just yeah. so cruel the way that it ended. That was that was ours. And then we didn't even get into Europe after. Mental because, it. yeah. But, um, yeah, so, you want me to run through that? The whole go on, thing? just go, yeah, go from the <laughs> beginning. To, go from the beginning to bottom, just so, so everyone can, because obviously understudies, just for the first yeah, team. I'm, I'm just going to, this is, this is my first team then. Yeah. Sorry if I've upset anyone, but <laughs> in Goldfield Parks, yeah, back four Billy Bonds. Yeah. Just, just cherish these names. Yeah, Billy Bonds, Alvin Martin, Bobby Moore, Julian Dix, Declan Rice if he stays, <laughs> Trevor Brooking, Mark Noble, Paolo Di Canio, Tony Cotty, Jeff Hurst. Substitute Ray Winston. <laughs> Oh, Ray, would he? He'd have a go, wouldn't Ray, he? Oh, Ray. Ray, Ray Winston and a bloke called Steve Davis, who was in the crowd that day when Harry said, do you think you can do better than me, Jeff? <laughs> and he came on and scored. Oh, that was a bad move, H. That was a oh, bad move. H. Oh, uh, H, yeah. bless him. Ray, Ray Winston and Steve Davis are subs. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all right. Team, Russ. <laughs> that's good oh i love it pill pill it's been a it's been lovely honestly look look, look an hour an hour has flown by yeah but that's because we're both west ham and we're just talking about what we like aren't we it is it just it always it always amazes me after when i finish an interview like how long we've we've chatted for and it just feels like that and i love it e easily do another hour if i tell yeah. you why <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> dinner's on that's what he said <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, man, it's been brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. I My can see a lot, of, a lot of heartaches got into there, so I appreciate it. Um, and obviously, thanks everyone for watching or listening. If you're on Spotify, or podcast, or YouTube, whatever, Maybe. make sure you subscribe. And for me and Pell, cover your eyes. We'll see you again very, very soon. Cover your eyes. Cover your eyes. Take care, everyone. Much love.